This is going to be my brain telling your brain how other brains study the brain. Brains are tricky things to study. You can't just cut into someone's head and have a look around. And even if you could, that wouldn't help you to figure out how the brain actually works to control the body. The brain functions by sending electrical signals, but you can't see electrical signals. So how the hell are you meant to investigate the brain? With magnetic resonance imaging. MRI, an incredible machine that uses magnetic fields to image the brain. You may have heard of an MRI machine and you may have even had a brain scan, but here's the thing. All MRI scans fall into one of two categories, structural MRI scans or functional MRI scans. Structural MRI scans, usually just referred to as MRI scans, reveal the structure of the brain with quite beautiful images like this that reveal a detailed structure of what the brain looks like and whether there are any medical abnormalities such as a tumour. Then there's also functional MRI that reveals crucial details about which parts of the brain are more active at certain times. Or during certain activities. If structural MRI is like a 3D camera that takes one photo of your brain, functional MRI is like a 3D video camera that takes multiple pictures of your brain across time to show how your brain is changing. But how could this technology actually work? It all starts with neurovascular coupling. What the hell is neurovascular coupling? Well, that's a great question. The key cells in your brain are neurons. They're responsible for transmitting electrical signals down these long pipes called axons. Sending these signals requires a lot of energy. The more work these neurons need to do to process and send signals, the more energy they require. So how do neurons get more energy? Your body obtains energy by combining glucose, a type of sugar molecule with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and access energy, a process called respiration. So to gain access to more energy, neurons need more glucose and more oxygen which they get from the rich supply of blood to your brain. So say you start listening to some music. The neurons that process and interpret sound in your brain have to start working extra hard. This causes the blood vessels that lie close to those neurons to increase in size, delivering a larger blood supply to those neurons. That is neurovascular coupling, the activity of groups of neurons being coupled to the size of the blood vessels that supply that part of the brain. Because of neurovascular coupling, increased blood flow to a certain area Area of the brain is a proxy for increased neuronal activity in that area. Altogether, this means we have areas of the brain that are more active with more oxygen-rich blood, and areas of the brain that are less active with less oxygen-rich blood. God, if only there was a difference in the magnetism of blood containing different quantities of oxygen. Oh wait, there is. Which brings us perfectly to our fMRI, which can measure something called the BOLD signal, the blood oxygen level dependent signal. An MRI machine is a huge magnet that can measure subtle changes in the magnetic field. Oxygen rich blood, called oxygenated blood, is diamagnetic, meaning it's slightly repelled by a magnetic field. Less oxygen rich blood, called deoxygenated blood, is paramagnetic, meaning it's slightly attracted to the magnetic field. These properties allow a blood oxygen level dependent a bold signal to be measured. The MRI machine is therefore able to distinguish where in the brain there's more oxygen rich blood. Because of neurovascular coupling, we can conclude that that area of the brain is more active. Because an fMRI scan is like a video camera that can take a whole image of the brain every two-ish seconds, we're able to see across time which areas of the brain get more and less oxygen as a person engages with different tasks and activities. So how can this be visualized? Well, the simple way is to get a glass brain image with these blobs in it. The blobs being the areas of the brain that have increased or decreased blood flow. And if you want to be fancy, you can map these identified areas onto a 3D model with flashing lights and cool colors. But this kind of aesthetic is mostly reserved for epic scientific conferences and advertising. So if you want to know which part of the brain is more active for someone with a neurological condition, or when they're happy, or sad, or excited, or tapping their fingers, stick them in an MRI machine, provoke that emotion or activity, give them an fMRI scan and see where their brain begins to light up. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.